All right, something new from last night's videos. We will go with Dev. Uh, conservation of momentum. Conservation of momentum. Be aware that we now have conservation of energy and conservation of momentum, and it is very typical for students to confuse the two. So we will spend time making sure you understand the difference. Today we're just going to concentrate on conservation of momentum, but we'll get to the differences between the two soon. Uh, conservation of momentum was the new thing for day. What, Kyle, is the equation for conservation of momentum? I don't know. Would you agree, class, that if Kyle had watched the videos for today, he would be able to tell me something about the equation for conservation of momentum? Yes. Thank you, Kyle, for agreeing with that. What is the equation for conservation of momentum? All right. Um, it's the net momentum initial is equal to the net momentum final in both of Thank you. And it was a box equation. Great. Net momentum initial equals net momentum final. This is the basic concept of conservation of momentum. And I will point out, whenever you use this equation, you need to actually write out what's in the equation. For example, we know momentum is mass times velocity, so you can just write down mass of object one times the velocity of object one initial, plus the mass of object two times the velocity of object two initial, equals the mass of object one times the velocity of one final, plus the mass of object two times the velocity of object two final. You have to write out the equation before you use the equation. It'll help you out in the long run. You'll have a much better concept of what you're doing. But that's the basic idea. Just like we had conservation of energy, and we wrote out the long equation there. You will have the same thing with this one. Speaking of conservation of energy and conservation of momentum, we need to understand when we can use these equations. So conservation of momentum. When can we use conservation of momentum? When is this true? Matty. During collisions and explosions. This is true during all collisions and explosions. And the truth is that an explosion is just a reverse collision. So they're the same thing, right? Just moving backwards in time. So collision and explosion. But you guys like to think of it as both. So we'll do that. So conservation momentum true during all collisions and explosions. We also have this equation. The net force equals change in momentum over change in time also was a box equation, it was not new, but I do want to take a moment to talk about, because now we have two different equations that have to do with collisions and explosions, and I want to talk about when you use one versus the other. Okay. Clearly, this is the equation you're going to use if you're going to try and find the force during the collision. Everybody agree with that? Right? This one doesn't have force in it, this one does. So that's clear. But it's also important to recognize one other piece, which is when you use conservation of momentum, how many objects are in the equation? A minimum of two. Sometimes you can have more than two. But notice, in the equation, you have two or more objects. What about? in net force equals change in momentum over change in time. How many objects are in that equation? Matt D. Is that also at least two? It is not also at least two, which is why I'm going through it. It's just one. This is the force acting on one object. This is the change in momentum of one object. Change in time is sort of irrelevant because it's a scalar, so you're not really talking about a specific object. But notice that this one right here has to do with one object. And that is an important distinction between those two equations. Okay. 